Hello, welcome to another tutorial. Today we are discussing form validation. This tutorial will show you how to validate user input from the UI and display useful validation messages in both reactive and template-driven forms. Anything that you want to store to your database needs to have multiple levels of validation. And I see validation the same as if you're at an audition or job interview. Something or rather someone is presented to you and you decide will he pass or not. To add validation to a template-driven form, you add the same validation attributes as you would with native HTML form validation. Angular uses directives to match these attributes with validator functions in the framework. Every time the value of a form control changes, Angular runs validation and generates either a list of validation errors that results in an invalid status or null, which results in a valid status. I'll create a name string field inside of our component class. Then in our HTML file, I'll add an input text field with required attribute and min length of four. I'm binding name input property to ng model and I'm exporting ng model to a local variable called name. ng model mirrors many of the properties of its underlying form control instance. So you can use this in template to check for control states such as valid and dirty. The ng if of the div element reveals a set of nested messages divs, but only if the name is invalid and the control is either dirty or touched. Each nested div can present a custom message for one of the possible validation errors. These are messages for required and min length. Now, if we type something and leave the field empty, we will get the validation error message. And the same goes if we enter value less than four characters long. In a reactive form, the source of truth is the component class. Instead of adding validators through attributes in the template, you add validator function directly to the form control model in the component class. The same built-in validators that are available as attributes in template-driven forms, such as required and min length, are all available to use as functions from the validator class. To update the validation form to be a reactive form, use some of the same built-in validators. In this example, the name control sets up two built-in validators, validators required and validators min length. These validators are synchronous, so they are passed as the second argument. Notice that you can support multiple validators by passing the functions in as an array. This example also adds a getter method. In a reactive form, you can always access any form control through the get method on its parent group, but sometimes it's useful to define getters as shorthand for the template. In our template, add form group to our form. And now, only thing that we need to change in our template to make it reactive is to remove ng model and to bind our name control to form control name. This form differs from the template driven version in that it no longer exports any directives. Instead, it uses the name getter defined in the component class. Notice that the required attribute is still present in the template. Although it's not necessary for validation, it should be retained for accessibility purpose. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. Please let me know in the comments what would you like to see in the next videos. Until the next time, see ya.